the byline says that it's um, about being child free, childless and child adjacent. Um, so I guess when you're going into it, that we're going to get stories from people who are child free, so people who have never wanted to have children, and people who are childless, people who maybe tried to have children and couldn't or didn't have children for other reasons that were kind of beyond their control. But we were quite surprised by the number of stories we got that were more in that child adjacent space, stories about different forms of caregiving and caretaking and different kinds of relationships with children and other people. Yeah, the, the boundaries between motherhood and otherhood were more blurred than we, than we thought. And we had originally thought that we might not include any parents or mothers, um, but we quickly realised that we wanted it to be an inclusive book and so it just absolutely would not work and it's so much richer for that experience. So we've got, you know, um, Janie Smith who was an egg donor, we have a foster mother, Melanie Newfield, we've got, um, you know, lots of fun aunties and we have, um, who else we have? We've got Nicola Brown who writes about secondary infertility mm. and we felt like that was a really important thing to include because there's this stigma against people who don't have children but then People who struggle with secondary infertility are also left out of that conversation when it does exist. So that mm. felt really important to include. And we have some bereaved parents as well, because when you've lost a child, particularly if it's your only child, and people ask if you're a mother, it's hard to know how to answer that question. Mm -hmm. It was a bit of a mix of shoulder tapping people, writers that we knew who had interesting stories and then putting a general call out for submissions. Mm. And then we got so many good submissions, it was a real balance trying to weigh up all the different types of stories. Yeah, mm. we, we, we started with, to get a publisher, we, we knew that we would need some samples because we knew it was a great concept. Um, and so we, we actually shoulder, we shoulder tapped a few people and we were immediately struck by it how everyone's response on oh hell yeah I've got something to say you know we, so we kind of knew that there was there was some passion there and so lots of people were very kind to give their time to to write samples for us and it's ultimately some of those ended up in the final collection um, and there's there's a kind of a slightly awkward moment where you're like hey I hear, I hear that I think that you've got no children because I've been stalking you online um, would you be interested in writing about it do you have children so there was a little bit of that yeah. but you've also got to be like I hope this isn't a really invasive, yeah, triggering question. But <laughs> do you yeah. have a story? We also did try to get Helen Clark, but Helen, she, call us. yeah, not too late. Maybe the sequel. The sequel. Um, so I think you know it, it is obviously a a tricky subject, but there are so many facets of it, you know, whether whether it's been through IVF or losing a child or whatever, and people really have entrusted us with a personal story. And I think there were there were some stories, some essays that didn't make into the book that were just almost like quite granular about the grind of IVF, for example. Um, whereas I think these there's a lot of essays that are really touching and you might cry. But, but it's because it's told in a storytelling sense, it's actually something that anyone can identify with, that you don't have to have been through it yourself. Um, and then there are stories that are just like plain sad and you just kind of feel the, for the bravery of the writers. And we do also have a lot of really funny stories in the book yeah. as well. So it's not all um, tough emotional going, some of them will have you <laughs> laughing out loud. Yeah, we have um, a romance novelist, Steph Green, who, whose essay is called More Schlongs, More Cats. Um, which is about the happily ever after in romance novels and why that so often still includes children. And there's a lot of use of the word schlong in there. Um, <laughs> and yeah, there are some real laugh out loud moments. And we didn't want it to be a collection that was all grim kind of story, like, you know, stories. It, it is a celebration because it's, it is about the theme of the book is kind of what, what makes a fulfilling life. And, and that, that relationship between a parent and child is not the be all and end all. So there's actually a lot of, um, really meaningful relationships in there as well yeah and there's such a diversity of experience like we didn't want to just have like dominant IVF stories or dominant you know happily child free stories and even within the three of us we've got a real diversity of experience so yeah we wanted to bring in like so many different kinds of experiences mm. yes
think for me, like my one of my bugbears is when people, and this is a little bit off topic, but when people go, well, my partner and I are going to have a baby next year. And I'm like, well, how do you know that you're going to? Like just that assumption that it's going to happen naturally. And then, and I think that's actually quite damaging to people who do go into the process thinking that they are going to have children. It's just going to happen like that's that. There's a lot of wedding vows. Really? Tim and I took that out when we got married because I felt the same way. Like we hadn't even started trying to have kids at that point, but I just felt like it's not a given and that mm. we had to stand up in front of everyone and say you're going to have kids not knowing whether you can or not. Yeah. Yeah. And so then when you're when you can't have kids or you struggle with it, you're suddenly on the outs of this of this thing. And and we've talked about how when you are a parent, you know, there's an inbuilt community that comes along with it, you know, you you the, f- the first question is always, do you have kids? And then you're off, you know, in conversation. And it's an easy conversation starter. But when you're outside of that, you don't have an inbuilt community. So that's something we wanted to create um, with the book, begin creating. Um, although there are other communities out there. Um, and kind of to make people think twice about what questions they ask people and think about what's the most interesting thing that I could actually talk to someone about that's not do you have children. It's amazing how many people do open a conversation by asking someone they've just met if they have children and it puts the onus on you, the person who doesn't have children, to come up with an answer that's not going to make the other person feel uncomfortable. Yes. Or you could choose to make them feel uncomfortable, but um, that's not yeah. really socially acceptable. Um, so it would be great if, if people were just a bit more um, thoughtful about how they talk to people about these topics that could be quite um, open a big can of worms. Mm. Yeah. And also just making more different types of stories visible. Mm-hmm. Because because there aren't as many communities, uh, like we were surprised when we started, just how many people came out of the woodwork with a story that you never hear otherwise. So, if these stories are out there and they're visible, then it's not as isolating, and we all can identify each other in a way that parents can identify each other. Yeah, I think I think everyone has been touched by a story that relates to otherhood because it's either happened to them or they have children who are child free or who have struggled so I think keeping that in mind it's just also I think like what's the interesting question like when people are asked you know tell us about you and they lead with their children I'm like well that's like that's awesome that you have kids and you obviously love them but like tell me something interesting about you and as you said earlier it's like that's not really about you like we want to know about you not not your children. We had we categorized we're big into spreadsheets mm. we categorized all of the essays in terms of what they touched on and then we just made sure to structure it in a way that was not too heavy on any one experience so that you read through kind of a, a gamut of emotions as you go through all the stories yeah so if you read a heavy one and you're like oh well then you might you know kind of get a lighter one or a different perspective yeah. But that said, I think the beauty of a book of essays is that you can, and with Otherhood, you can just flip through and read what, whatever tickles your fancy. Um, so I think it's it's up to the reader really as well. So I think you could pick it up and, and depending on what mood you're on, you know, read, read the essay you want. Yeah. And one of them is a comic. Oh yes, yes, and a comic. We've got a lovely comic from um, Sam Orchard who has got a great um, panel in there about the cis panic face. Um, when when people ask trans people questions like you know do you want to be a parent and then they go oh oh god am I supposed to ask that am I allowed to ask that um, so he writes about that and it's very it's very good I think just coming back to the idea of like the tone of voice and having lots of sad essays and stuff is that um, there, it is storytelling like it is stories it's 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 a, it's not an easy read but you some essays are like just a, a genuine genuine delight. And I, I think sometimes when you are trying to re- get into a topic, you find a lot of academic texts about it. Mm. Um, and this is this is kind of like you're spending some time with friends or people that you can identify with, with and that's really nice. Well, we just did an RNZ interview this morning, and we've already had feedback from people saying just the interview made them cry. <laughs> <laughs> And we have had a really huge response from people. Um, our Instagram following just keeps mushrooming. Um, 
And yeah. the writers, when we first approached them, as Lil said, were like, yes, I really have a story to tell and I haven't had the chance before. Yeah, I think people were really like waiting for a, a platform or a chance to tell stories. And I think there have been like the key moments through our process, almost like when we were flagging in our energy, that we realised that this was actually going to be meaningful to people. You know, there was when we when we talked to writers and, and, and got the interest back, and then I think when we did the crowdfunding um, to pay to pay our contributors, that was another time when we were like, whoa, people are really into this. Yeah, that was when it really hit home because we had a pretty big target and we raised half the money by the end of the first day. And so that's when we were like, oh, people are really going to, like, this is hitting. Yeah, there's yeah. a real thirst for it. Mm. Yeah. And now we'll see. Now that the book's out, we kind of looking forward to getting some feedback from from readers. We've had some early feedback from yeah. people, and it, I find it really interesting that that people um, people like different essays. People uh, different essays resonate with different people, and I think that's about style as well as content. So it's just so delicious to see what what catches people. I think, and we've had a lot of support from parents so far. Yeah, um, yeah, like parents have helped with the boosted, mm. and even. Like, if you do have kids, a lot of people have still had a fertility journey to get there. Mm -hmm. So we hope that, that heaps of people, not just childhood people, will be able to see their story mm -hmm. represented. I guess it's also seeing that life you could have led, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people are kind of ambivalent about children, and then maybe your life takes you in, in a certain direction. So I think there'll be people out there who will read this and think, oh, that could have been me if um, mm -hmm. my life had gone down a different path. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we have submitted our sample essays to a few publishers, had a little bit of interest, but as soon as we talked to Massey, we knew that they were the ones who, like, they were yeah. just really excited about it and they got it. They were super keen and yeah. they've just been so good to work with. Yeah, they've been quite hands-off in a way that's been helpful, but also responsive. So they 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 kind of let us go wild. We, we chose the essays ourselves amongst the three of us. They didn't really have an opinion, you know. I'm sure they did. They had opinions when, when asked, but they they re they knew it was our project, and they were just kind of there cheerleading yeah. along the way. Yeah, we had full creative freedom. Yeah, so that was really nice. Yeah, and also probably I'd like to give a shout out to one our donors for the the crowdfunding because that was just huge, and I know a lot of them are really invested in the journey, and also our contributors. Like, has been like such a nice process because we split up the essays and in, in, into three and um, edited about 12 each mm. roughly and that's been really great to build special bonds with people and have like jokes and to see their I think we could see some essays needed more work than others as natural but you can you could always see the gem the kernel in there yeah. and I think that's been quite a special thing to have people trust their stories with us yeah. um, to entrust them to us and then we're really looking forward to like actually meeting a lot of them yeah. at the launches that's why we're doing three launches you know. <laughs> over the next couple of weeks.